Hi, I'm Samira Ahmed, lead esthetician and educator at Truth Treatment Systems, and today I'll be showing you on my lovely model how to do a mandelic acid peel. Um, I have already consulted with my client on her skin type, her home care regimen, and her overall nutrition and wellness, so I know that she is a good fit for this peel, but contraindications for this peel would include, of course, really standard contraindications. So um, pregnancy, you don't really want to apply peels to any open sores or any open lesions on the skin. Um, but really, this peel is quite safe for any skin type. Um, Fitzpatrick one through six. Mandelic acid is a really large um, molecule size, so it makes it really safe. It doesn't sink down deep into the layers and it doesn't um, overly aggressively affect um, melanin synthesis or anything like that. So really this is a very safe option for all skin types and concerns, um, especially in this particular formula where we've boosted it with azelaic acid. And azelaic acid is a really cool acid because it provides anti-inflammatory benefits, anti-redness benefits, as well as antiseptic and antibacterial uh, support. So that makes this peel really, really effective for, of course, acne, but also papulopustular rosacea. Um, so those sensitive kind of redness skin types that we typically have a hard time treating, this peel is actually really, really a great option to help resurface and reduce some of that redness um, that we can see in those skin types. So to begin, we're going to prepare the client's skin with um, a cleanse. We'll start with the Honey Hyaluronic Cleanser, which is a gentle cream-based cleanser um, that uses natural surfactants to remove dirt, oil, makeup, sunscreen without disrupting the pH of the skin and without stripping the skin of its natural oils. And even though this is a cream cleanser, it rinses off completely clean, leaving no residue on the skin. So this is always a fantastic option to remove makeup um, and to use as a first cleanse for any um, facial protocol that you might be doing. I'm then going to add a little bit of water to help emulsify the cleanser um, and facilitate removal. This cleanser contains um, a high dose of hyaluronic acid as well as Colorado clover honey, which provides natural enzymatic benefits and is very hydrating and soothing to the skin. To remove, we'll use a cool towel as you never want to heat the skin up or use steam ahead of a chemical peel. And I do like to warn the client when I'm using a cool towel to expect that it will be chilly just so it's not a shock, but usually it feels really, really nice and refreshing, especially ahead of a resurfacing protocol. For our next cleanse, we're going to be using our Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser. This cleanser is also a cream-based cleanser, so it's appropriate for all skin types, including dry, but the salicylic acid in it provides a nice exfoliating benefit while also lowering the pH of the skin to prepare for the peel. The peppermint in the cleanser is really, really refreshing and actually works to stimulate microcirculation. So it's really great for detoxifying the skin and aiding in congested and acne prone skin types. And again, we'll remove with a cool towel. To prepare the skin for the peel, we're going to use our pre-treatment solution. This treatment solution does not use alcohol or acetone to defat the skin, but rather it uses a blend of acids to slowly lower the pH of the skin and begin the exfoliation process. It also contains nutrition, so we've included vitamin C, polyelectrolyte minerals, amino acids, hyaluronic acid, and um, glycogen to really support the skin at every single step of the resurfacing process. When we're using ingredients that are really stripping, like acetone or alcohol, we're really minimizing the skin's ability to kick into repair mode and we're removing its natural defenses. So by ensuring that we're providing the skin with adequate, adequate topical nutrition through every step of this process, we're ensuring a really healthy and positive peel result. For any application, I like to use a crisscross motion to ensure that the skin is adequately saturated and covered um, from every angle. Because this pre-treatment solution does contain acid in it, it will cause a little bit of stimulation on the skin. So I like to offer um, a few minutes to touch base with my client and make sure that they're not feeling overly stimulated at this step. And if they are, it gives us an opportunity to maybe step back the peel that we were gonna do or adjust the protocol uh, that we were planning on pursuing with the client. So where would you say your skin is at on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being on fire? Perfect. 
so and of course we can always watch to ensure that there aren't any red redness uh, or hot spot areas typically those occur around the nostrils around the mouth and sometimes on the orbital bone if that is a concern and if you are noticing that on your client we were able to occlude the skin with our omega-6 healing cream which provides a really nice barrier for those sensitive areas on the face Elizabeth's skin seems to be responding beautifully, so I'm just not going to um, do that part for this protocol today. So we'll begin with the peel now that her skin is effectively um, prepared. Our mandelic azelaic peel is the peel that I'll be using today. Mandelic acid is a really interesting acid because it is an alpha hydroxy acid, so it stays at the surface of the skin and it's actually a rather large molecule. So it's really safe because it doesn't penetrate too aggressively into the skin, making it safe for all skin types. But it also does have uh, lipophilic properties to it. So in areas where there is excess oil production or active acne, this peel will actually penetrate deeper into those areas, making it really effective for neutralizing acneic conditions, um, for normalizing sebum production, and really balancing out oily combination skin types. This particular peel is a gel peel, so I'll be dispensing it into a bowl and applying it with a fan brush. So when applying the peel, it's important to work in quick layers, in quick motions to ensure that the entire face gets covered as quickly and evenly as possible. And with this formula, we really just want a nice even layer on the skin uh, without um, differentiation in thickness or without um, lines of demarcation that are thicker than others. So I like to use a flat synthetic um, brush to achieve this result. This peel also includes azelaic acid, which has really um, strong anti-inflammatory and antiseptic qualities, making it a fantastic peel for acne. As well, it really helps to neutralize and reduce redness. Um, so this peel is fantastic for papulopustular rosacea, um, as well as any kind of cuperose or red um, sensitive types of skins. Um, it's really a very safe peel because of the blend of acids that have been chosen. So we're looking for very subtle color changes in the skin, very subtle pinks, and of course we want to check in with our client to ensure that they're not experiencing too much activity. I connected with my client and she said she's at about an 8, which is where uh, we would want her. So I'm not feeling any redness or any irritation in the skin, but just to alleviate any discomfort for your client, I'm going to go ahead and start the neutralization process. Because this is a gel peel, you can't just go right in with a neutralizer because there are, it's just a thicker peel. So I'm going to start by removing the bulk of the peel using the Honey Hyaluronic Cleanser and removing with a barely damp towel. I'm using very short strokes with very little pressure to really focus on removing the peel without disturbing the freshly resurfaced skin making sure to cleanse the area around the nose and around the mouth. Now we'll go in with our vitamin C neutralizer. This again contains a lot of nutrition to support the skin while healing. And it's a baking soda free neutralizer. So the response is less um, spicy, less aggressive than other neutralization products. Um, it just slowly starts to raise the pH of the skin and end the peel. How does your skin feel now? Where like, would you say that like you're at? Six. Okay, great. So I'm going to allow this to remain on the skin and I'm going to continue misting until the client is at about a two or a one. I can also use sponges that have a little bit of a grip to them to make sure that I've grabbed any peel um, that might be remaining on the skin. And you might notice that your client's skin gets more red or you see more frosting um, upon the neutralization and removal process and that's totally normal. Um, so that's why we're looking for those really subtle changes with the peel on because we know that we'll really see the full response as we start to remove the peel. Where would you say you're at now? Okay, three. Perfect. 
So the peel will slowly start to climb down in sensation and that's really what we want to get to is to give the client a little bit of time to feel their skin come down before we move on with the protocol. I'll give you one more mist of the neutralizer. Do you feel like you have any hot spots or is it kind of even? So to target those areas that are maybe feeling a little bit more spicy than others, I'm just gonna press in neutralizer in those areas specifically. And we are seeing a little bit of frosting where she's feeling some of that heat, which is totally normal. Um, so that all is to be expected. But you can see the skin's not blotchy, it's not overly red, it's not like a flash burn sensation. It really slowly climbed up and slowly climbs down. And a lot of times what clients will feel with um, peels that are very nutrition heavy is more of an itching sensation or more of a pulsing sensation um, as opposed to a flash burn. And that is really because we're using the acid to drive in nutrition into the skin. So our goal here is not to damage or to really kind of cause a scabbing effect on the surface of the skin. We're really using the acid um, as a stimulant to drive nutrition into the skin and to really kind of turn the skin on. So an itching, throbbing sensation is really a positive sign of collagen and elastin turning on and the skin um, kicking into healing response immediately uh, to begin repair. So that's a really great um, sign. And where would you say that you're at now? A one. Perfect. So we want to wait for the client to get to about a one before we move on. And next we're going to move right into healing and supporting the skin further with additional nutrition. So to alleviate any discomfort in the skin and to support the skin in its healing, we're going to use our cooling mask. This is a zinc oxide and oat based formula, so it's really going to feel very soothing and cooling on the skin and bring out any sensation of heat while also supporting it with um, the same nutrition that we've put in every step of this peel. Fulvic minerals, uh, polyelectrolytes rather, um, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, glycogen, amino acids. So all kinds of topical nutrition to support the skin in its healing and repair while leaving the client feeling comfortable and soothed. So this step can remain on the skin for 10 minutes and is a really nice opportunity for you to treat your clients a little bit. I like to offer a hand and arm massage or maybe a scalp massage and really create um, a really high touch kind of love filled um, chemical peel protocol because anytime that we do um, a really relaxing um, treatment on a client they're just going to have a nicer experience overall as opposed to just putting an acid on their face and kicking them out the door. So. Uh, we'll allow for 10 minutes and, and love on our client a little bit. So I would continue this down the hand and arms for the full 10 minutes, um, or you can do any facial or uh, decollete and arm and massage protocol that you like. A scalp massage is always really nice. Um, anything that of course doesn't disturb the face at this point is a really nice add-on to your treatment. So we've had the mask on for about 10 minutes at this point. A lot of it has absorbed into the skin, which is great, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest and move on. Next, we're going to use our zinc calming gel to further calm and nourish the skin. This formula contains a high dose of zinc oxide to really soothe um, and calm the skin. It also has really nice anti-acne benefits, so if you are treating an acneic client, this is a really nice um, option for neutralizing any of that acne that we may have resurfaced. And it also feels really nice and calming. At this point, the client's skin always feels really, really soothed and relaxed following the protocol. Again, we're not rubbing things into the skin, but we are just gently pressing so as not to disturb the resurfaced skin. This also provides um, a small amount of sun protection so that if your client is heading out, they have that protection in their skin. And then we're going to go ahead and seal it in with our Omega-6 healing cream. This provides a high dose of lipophilic vitamin C as well as Omega-6 fatty acids and um, in a semi-occlusive base. 
so we're not trapping any heat into the skin, but we are really protecting it as we send the client out and on their way. And they're getting adequate nourishment and all of the building blocks that they need to heal their skin following the procedure. And we're just emulsifying and gently pressing it into the skin. This is also what I will be consulting the client on using for the next three days post peel to protect and nourish their skin until um, any resurfacing has occurred. So it's a really nice nutritive protective product that can be used on really any resurfacing procedures but also cuts, burns, any scrapes. It's just a really nice healing option for, for the skin. And you can see it also leaves the client's skin with a really beautiful glow. They look rosy and fresh-faced, um, not like they just got overworked or, or burned. Um, so this is really the result that we're looking for. And these treatments, because they are so nutrition-rich in every step of the process, we do tell our clients that they're not going to experience um, a major resurfacing and a lot of peeling. And that's actually okay. A lot of people think that you have to peel in sheets in order to get a good result. But again, what we're really doing is using the acid as a driver to turn the skin on. So usually when my clients leave the table, their skin feels alive. It feels like it has a pulse. It feels really glowy and fresh. And that is just as good of a result for me as somebody that would expect to peel in sheets for days. So we're not damaging the skin and hoping it repairs. We're really pushing nutrition into the skin and giving it every opportunity to repair and heal and continue to uh, boost collagen and elastin and resurface any um, discoloration and any acne. Again, my name is Samira, lead esthetician and educator at Truth Treatment Systems. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you learned a little bit about mandelic acid and how important it is to really support your client um, with topical and internal nutrition um, following a peel procedure. Thank you for watching.